Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Zunay Jahangir Abbasi and today there is an interesting case who presented to me uh, with polyuria and polydipsia. Uh, he is Mateen. He is uh, two years old right now but at the first time when he presented to me he was only 15 months old and the parents told me that the child is having polyuria and polydipsia and initially he also had fever which was later settled. The child was not thriving well at that time. Still he's not thriving well. The child is, uh, at, the, at the age of 15 months, he was only 8 kg weight. So, first of all, I confirmed whether he has polydipsia or polyuria and whether he is eager to thirst. That means that whether he's always try to drink more or not and what is the volume of urine collected in 24 hours this is what you need to uh, measure exactly rather than believing the parents that how much water is he taking in 24 hours and how much water he is excreting in 24 hours so i'm showing you uh, a 250 ml uh, nestle water bottle half of which he has uh, already drunken right now before making this video and the rest of the half i'm giving him So you can see that he is drinking eagerly. Adi botli already pui chuka tha, aur Adi baki bhi ek saans mein pii gaya. Aur iske father batate hain ki ye even ek dead liter ki botal bhi pani ki pii jata hai. Ji, ab sir batayenge ki ye kitna pani takriban 24 ghante mein pii jata tha pehle aur ab? Sir, ye takriban ek dafa hi ek liter dead liter pani jo hai na pii jata hai. Pii jata hai. दस पन दस लीटर तक पानी चौबीस घंटे में चौबीस घंटे में दस लीटर पानी भी पी जाता है अगर इसको देना देते रहें तो दस लीटर भी पानी पी जाता है कभी इनकार नहीं करेगा नहीं इनकार नहीं करेगा अभी भी आप इसको बोतल में and uh, I was surprised that uh, 2.5 liters of urine is collected in 24 hours. That is 2500 ml uh, per day. And when I uh, calculated per kg per hour, then it came to be 13 ml per kg per hour and 312 ml per kg per day. So definitely I concluded that the child is having polyuria as well. Now, having clearly defined polyuria and polydipsia, now I made two differentials in my mind. I thought either it is a case of RTA or it is a case of uh, diabetes insipidus. The sugars were measured at different intervals, they were all normal. So I did an ABGs and the pH, I did ABGs twice and at both intervals the, a, the a, ABGs had a normal pH. So. Um, RTA was ruled out. Now I had a differential of nephrogenic uh, of diabetes insipidus in my mind, and uh, diabetes. Con considering diabetes insipidus, uh, I had um, I I ordered uh, serum osmolality and urine osmolality, and <clears throat> when the result came, I I must want to show results with you. Uh, you can see this serum, uh, sorry, urine osmolality report. The urine osmolality was less. The range is 250 to 900, the, but his urine osmolality was 185 at one interval. And another interval, the urine osmolality was even less than this. You can see the report. It was 165 milliosmoles per kg. So low urine osmolality indicates diabetes insipidus. Now I measured serum osmolality. Usually serum osmolality gets increased uh, in diabetes insipidus but that is more evident with when you do a water deprivation test. So another another sample of urine osmolality shows a urine osmolality of 52 milliosmoles per kg. So at one occasion it was 52 milliosmoles per kg. 
at one occasion it was 185 milli osmoles per kg and at one occasion it was 165 milli osmoles per kg so three other reports of urine osmolality shows a decreased urine osmolality and now we planned a water deprivation test so first of all i must tell you what we do in water deprivation test <clears throat> in water deprivation test we actually uh, make the child we, we, we take the weight in the morning and then the child is deprived of water for a maximum of seven hours during which time the child's uh, weight pulse blood pressure urine osmolality they are measured hourly and plasma sodium levels and osmolality are measured every two hourly so you can see the chart in which the timings were written weight and the rest of the things are written now I must, students, please keep this thing in your mind that you need to terminate the test of water deprivation if the weight falls by 5% from the starting weight or serum uh, and you note the serum osmolality. So what happens that when you do a water deprivation test, the serum osmolality rises and the urine osmolality falls. The serum osmolality rises and the urine osmolality falls. You make the what you make the child. वाटर डिप्राइव्ड जब उसको पानी नहीं मिलेगा तो वो जो नॉर्मली पानी पी के चीजों को कंपनसेट कर रहा था वो कंपनसेट नहीं कर पाएगा सो एट द एंड ऑफ द वाटर डिप्राइवेशन टेस्ट व्हाट वी डू नो हिज हिज इरिटेबल हिज इज प्रॉब्लम लुकिंग फॉर मोर वाटर सो लेट मी गिव हिम सम मोर वाटर सो दैट सो आई एम गिविंग हिम मोर वाटर एंड यू कैन सी दैट ही इज drinking eagerly a full large cup of water this is all water so you know he is always thirsty anyhow i was um, telling you about you uh, at the end of water deprivation test we used to do uh, ddavp challenge desmopressin and if you give a dose of the ddavp at the end of water deprivation test the urine and plasma osmolality they are, they are measured again so arise arise in urine concentration means ki agar aapne dd avp di aur urine zyada concentrate ho gaya that confirms the diagnosis of central diabetes insipidus whereas a child with nephrogenic diabetes insipidus will fail to concentrate urine after dd avp so when we have given dd avp challenge he failed to concentrate his urine which shows us that he is a case of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus so <laughs> having established a diagnosis of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus so having so you can see wo pani bhi bahut pehle bhi pee chuka so already hamare paas ye uh, video start hone se pehle bhi kafi pani wo pee chuka hai so, so you can let me uh, having established the diagnosis of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus let me tell you what are the causes of diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus can be central can be nephrogenic the central diabetes insipidus causes can include uh, so the central diabetes insipidus can be due to craniopharyngioma it can be due to germinoma can be due to langerhans cell histiocytosis it can be idiopathic and it can trauma can also cause the central diabetes insipidus along with infections of cns remember that certain drugs can also cause central diabetes insipidus like phenytoin ethanol opioids alpha adrenergics and halothen and then there are nephrogenic and then there are causes of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus nephrogenic diabetes insipidus can be caused by axling nephrogenic diabetes insipidus or it can be also secondary to renal damage and there are certain drugs which include foscarnate clozapine methicillin amphotericin rifampicin and lithium toxicity they can also call they can also lead to nephrogenic diabetes insipidus so once establishing the diagnosis of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus uh we started a combination of indomethacin and amiloride now let me tell you the treatment of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus in in, in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus we we need to eliminate the underlying cause we need to give adequate calories for growth and we need to avoid severe dehydration acha uh, sir main aapko batana chahta hu ki bacche ko aapne pani ki kami se bachana hai जब कभी बच्चा पानी पीना चाहे तो आपने उसको पानी पीने देना है ताकि उसे पानी की कमी ना हो ये बात आपको पता है वेरी गुड ठीक है सो इस तरह से आपने पेरेंट्स को गाइड करना है कि आपको डिहाइड्रेशन अवॉइड करना है एंड देन यू नीड टू गिव फूड विद हाईएस्ट रेशियो ऑफ कैलोरिक कंटेंट टू ऑस्मोटिक लोड दैट इज दो फूड 
in which there is sodium is less than 1 millimoles per kg they should be preferred so 1 millimoles per kg se kam sodium 24 hour mein dena hai aapne aur agar chota bachcha hai jo doodh pee raha hai to similac 60 40 is a good option in order to meet this requirement then thyroid diuretics have a role and indomethacin and amyloride also has a role in treatment of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and if there is genetic deficiency in the v2 receptors then high dose gd avp and indomethacin can also be given in the treatment of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus so with this we conclude today's video i hope that you have understood what is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and how it is managed and you have seen a live case of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus thank you so much